Hello and welcome to Tech with Jaspal. This is part two of the HR Administrator exam practice question series where we are going to go through questions on some of very important topics which includes storage replication, HR RBAC, backup and recovery services vault and some of the networking concepts. Folks, if you would like for some specific topics to be covered in this Q&A series, then post them in the comment section so we can include those in the next parts. Now, without wasting much time, let's get into the questions. This is question number eight of the series. Your company has a general purpose V1 Azure storage account named Storage1, which currently uses locally redundant storage. You need to implement a solution that protects the data in this storage account in case of a zone failure while minimizing costs and administrative effort. What should you do first? And your options are upgrade the account to general purpose V2, modify the replication settings of the storage account, create a new storage account, configure object replication rules. So friends, here they are looking for an option which provides redundancy against zonal failures, which is basically geo-zone redundant storage. And there is only one kind of storage that provides this functionality, which is general purpose V2. So the correct answer is option A, upgrade the account to general purpose V2. We won't choose any option related to replication modification here as the question also talks about minimizing the cost and administrative effort. Next question, you have an Azure subscription and you create an Azure storage account shown in the following exhibit. Let's go through the exhibit first friends, then we will look at what is the next part of the question. So friends, the subscription that hosts this storage account is named as subscription one and the resource group where this storage account is being created is RG1 and the location of the storage account is North Europe. Name of the storage account is storage 16852 and account type is storage version 2 general purpose v2. Replication is locally redundant storage, performance is standard and access tier is defined as hot. Connectivity method is through a private endpoint and then there are some advanced settings which is basically uh, secure transfer is required which is enabled, large file shares is disabled and blob soft delete is also disabled and there are a bunch of more options which are disabled. Let's now look at next part of this question. Select the answer choice that completes each statement based on the information provided in the screenshot in previous tab. The minimum number of copies of the storage account will be your options are one, two, three, and four. And friends, you would have noticed the replication type was locally redundant storage and locally redundant storage replicates your storage accounts three times within a single data center in a primary region. So the correct answer is option C, three. Now the next part of the question is, to reduce the cost of infrequently accessed data in the storage account, you must modify which setting and your options are access tier default, performance, account kind, replication. Folks, the correct answer here would be access tier as it has the cool option to store infrequently accessed data. Next question. You have a Azure subscription named subscription one that contains a virtual network named VNet one in a resource group named RG one. Subscription one includes a user named user one who currently has the following roles, which are reader, security admin and security reader. What should you do to ensure that user one can assign the reader role for VNet one to other users? Your options are assign user one the contributor role for VNet one, remove user one from the security reader role for subscription one and assign user one the contributor role for RG one, assign user one the owner role for VNet one, assign user one the network contributor role for VNet one. And friends, the correct answer here is option C, assign user one the owner role for VNet one. Let's understand more about these roles and determine the tricks you need to know to answer such questions, folks. So friends, all the roles that were talked about in the question were subscription roles. So let's search through these subscription roles in Azure portal and look at the definition of those roles to understand how you need to approach while answering such questions. 
So the first option was assign user one the contributor role for VNet one, and second option was also a variation where you were removing uh, security reader role from user one and then assigning the contributor role. But again, uh, the role was contributor in option one, you were assigning it at VNet level, and in option two, you were assigning it, it at RG level, which is resource group. So here we have the uh, contributor role uh, highlighted. Let's read through its permission. Basically, it says it grants full access to manage all resources, but does not allow you to assign roles in Azure RBAC, manage assignments in Azure Blueprints, or share image galleries. Now, folks, they have clearly written here that it does not allow you to assign roles in Azure RBAC. And the requirement here was that user one can assign the reader role for VNet one to other user. This is why we have chosen that option A and option B are not correct because even though contributor gives you full access to manage resources, but it doesn't give you ability to assign roles to other users. Now, the other wrong option, option was network contributor role for VNet one. Again, it is a form of contributor role. So you can expect that it won't allow you to uh, assign roles to other users, but let's read through it to understand the difference between the global contributor and network contributor role. Now the network contributor role says, lets you manage networks, but not access to them. Again, they have exclusively mentioned you cannot manage access to networks using this role, which is why we have ruled out option D, which is network contributor role for VNet1, which leaves us with the last option that is assign user1 the owner role for VNet1. So let's read through the owner role and then I'll, I'll tell you the tricks which you need to remember while answering such questions. So folks, for owner roles, it says grants full access to manage all resources, including the ability to assign roles in Azure RBAC. So folks, that is the reason we have chosen this option as the correct option because it gives you ability to assign roles in Azure RBAC. Now, what I wanted to tell you when I was talking about tips and tricks while answering this question, folks, for example, let's say the question has a mention of least privileged access. Then in that case, owner role is not the right role. In the options, you should look at something like user access administrator role because user access administrator role also lets you manage access to these different roles in uh, Azure RBAC. So uh, this is the key to answer this question. In this question, there was no mention about uh, least privileged access and neither user access administrator role was part of it. But you should know that if you have user access administrator role in the option and owner role, then your first priority should be to choose user administrator role as the correct answer. So folks, I hope you now understand the reason behind choosing owner role as the correct answer in this case. But if you still have any doubts, please post them in the comments section. 11th question of the series. You have two Azure virtual networks named VNet1 and VNet2. VNet1 contains a virtual machine named VM1 and VNet2 contains a virtual machine named VM2. VM1 hosts a front-end application that connects to VM2 to retrieve data. Users have reported that the front-end application is slower than usual. To diagnose the issue, you need to view the average round-trip time of the packets from VM1 to VM2. You are looking at RTT here. Which Azure Network Watcher feature should you use? And your options are connection troubleshoot, IP flow verify, NSG flow logs, connection monitor. To view the average round trip time of packets from VM1 to VM2 in Azure, you should use the connection monitor feature of Azure Network Watcher. Connection monitor allows you to monitor the connectivity between two virtual machines and provides information about latency, packet loss, and other network metrics which help you diagnose network performance issues like the reported slow front-end application. Now friends, let's understand why other options are incorrect. Connection troubleshoot helps diagnose connectivity issues by checking the reachability between a source and a destination. It can determine if a connection is blocked by network security group, user-defined routes, or other configurations. 
IP flow verify checks if traffic is allowed or denied between a source and destination address and port. It is primarily used for verifying security group configurations and ensuring that network traffic can flow as intended. Now, NSG flow logs capture information about IP traffic flowing through network security groups. They provide detailed information about allowed and denied traffic, but focus on security and traffic flow analysis. Let's look at next questions, folks. You have an Azure subscription named subscription one that includes two virtual networks, VNet one and VNet two. VNet one has a VPN gateway named VPN GW one that uses static routing. A site-to-site -site VPN connection exists between your on-premise network and VNet1. On a Windows 10 computer named Client1, you configure a point-to-site VPN connection to VNet1. Virtual network peering is configured between VNet1 and VNet2. You can connect to VNet2 from the on-premise network, but Client1 cannot connect to VNet2. You need to ensure that Client1 can connect to VNet2. What should you do? Your options are enable BGP on VPN GW1, select allow gateway transit on VNet1, download and reinstall the VPN client configuration package on client1, select allow gateway transit on VNet2. Folks, the VPN client on the PC is no longer valid because the network topology has changed in this case. And whenever such changes happen, then the VPN client package for Windows client must be downloaded and installed again. And you also need to ensure you use the same certificates. Question number 13. You have two Azure virtual machines named VM1 and VM2 and two recovery services vault named RSV1 and RSV2. VM2 is currently backed up to RSV1 and you need to back up VM2 to RSV2. What should you do first? And your options are from the RSV2 blade, click backup from the backup blade, select the backup for the virtual machine and then click backup. From the RSV1 blade, click backup items and stop the VM2 backup. From the RSV1 blade, click backup jobs and export the VM2 job. From the VM2 blade, click disaster recovery, click replication settings, and then select RSV2 as the recovery services vault. When you backup a virtual machine to a recovery services vault, the backup is stored in that vault. You cannot have the same virtual machine backed up to two different vaults. In order to backup VM2 to RSV2, you first need to stop the backup of VM2 from RSV1 once the backup is stopped, you can then create a new backup job for VM2 in RSV2. Next question. You plan to backup an Azure virtual machine named VM1. You discover that the backup pre-check status displays a status of warning. What is the possible cause of warning status? Your options are a recovery services vault is unavailable. VM1 is stopped. VM1 does not have the latest version of the Azure VM agent WA app agent.exe installed. VM1 has an unmanaged disk. Friends, the possible cause of the warning status in the backup pre-check for an Azure virtual machine named VM1 can be VM1 does not have the latest version of Azure VM agent installed. Having an outdated or incompatible version of the Azure VM agent could lead to warnings during the backup pre-check process. It's essential to ensure that VM1 has the latest version of the Azure VM agent installed to ensure compatibility and successful backup operations. Question number 15 of the series, friends. You deploy Azure virtual machine across three Azure regions, each with its own virtual network. These networks are interconnected via peered subnets in a full mesh topology. With the network security groups configured on each subnet, a user reports connectivity issues, specifically being unable to use port 33000 to connect between virtual machines in different regions. Which two options can you use to diagnose the issue? Your options are Connection Troubleshoot, Azure Virtual Network Manager, 
Azure Monitor Network Insights, Selective Security Rules, IP Flow Verify. And folks, two options that you can choose would be Connection Troubleshoot and IP Flow Verify. The Connection Troubleshoot feature of Network Watcher provides the capability to check a direct TCP connection from a virtual machine to a virtual machine fully qualified domain name, URI, or IPv4 address. The results returned can provide insights about the root cause of the connectivity problem and whether it's due to a platform or user configuration issue. And folks, IP Flow Verify is a feature provided by Azure Network Watcher that allows you to check if traffic is allowed or denied between a source and destination IP address and port within a virtual network. It helps identify any network security group rules or route table configurations that might be blocking the traffic. If you have liked the content friends, then don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe the channel. As a reminder, if you are interested in obtaining the complete set of questions in PDF format, which covers over 300 questions, then remember to take the gold membership and send an email to devopshub2023 at gmail.com to request your copy. I'll see you in the third part of the series.